All right, we have a special edition video with our very special guest today, Matt Cohn Geyer. Uh, round of applause for MCG, everyone. Everyone, clap Thank in the you. circle. I don't know if you can tell, but I, I taught preschool kids uh, for very, very many, many years. For, round of applause equals clap in a circle. Um, but no, welcome. Thank you for being here. I like it. Yeah, thank you for having me. I uh, appreciate the, the round of applause, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I've got many <laughs> more of those where that came from. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so you messaged me, said you were playing a, a match against uh, Gaz Owen, a player from the UK, a really good player, and I decided to hop on and start recording, but the match had already started playing. But we're only six moves in, so we haven't really missed that much. I'll probably show the six moves that happened at some point, and then we'll do like uh, sort of an XG look through this match later, a bit more in depth, kind of look at some of the decisions and what you were thinking about, and maybe some of Gaz's decisions as well. I actually played him last night on Galaxy, and uh, and I took him down. So let's. Uh... <laughs> He's a good player. So, yeah, I played I played a few times with him. Yeah. So so uh, what is this match for again? This is for the Winter Legends 2023, which is uh, it's an online tournament. Uh, Arda's been uh, running online tournaments. And how do you the, how do you hear about these tournaments? Um, I just heard that uh, Arda was running them, but uh, I think they're on uh, Carl's website for one. Um, da, da, da. Arda has a website also, but I'm not exactly sure what the. It's all good. Now, what if you're a legend, but only in the springtime? Can you still play in the winter version? <laughs> I don't know. You might have to wait until <laughs> April. <laughs> you might have to wait until the seasons change. <laughs> so uh, you're, you're, you know, you're on the roof like... with two checkers here. But uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> so so before we begin, what went wrong? <laughs> yeah, so I opened with a 3-1, which is usually a good start. And then uh, guess split and kind of left a bunch of blots. And I just like tried to blitz them, uh, which is... Usually the right idea, I think, to like uh, prevent him from cleaning up the blots and making new points and, you know, have the stronger board. Uh, but it didn't really work, as you can see. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> and, uh, at some point I fanned with a double six, which, you know, doesn't help. It's never and, a good thing. Um, you got two guys up, yeah. double six, and then... Uh, I think I only had one up, but yeah, yeah. Um, well, I missed the first six moves, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> One could uh, only assume, but uh, you're on roll yeah, now, so, and you get to so enter with the three. Yeah, so now it's like time for Plan B. I gotta somehow put this back together. <laughs> you know, Matt, Plan B is my Plan A. <laughs> All right, <Okay>. so <laughs> let's uh, let's for backgammon only. So let's uh, let's. Let's time the start of this match so we can start doing this. So we're going to go okay. one, two, three, and... Okay. So I roll a three, six, and Gaz is considering a cube, and he does. I think it's a pretty easy take because he still only has a one-point board, and I have a two-point board, and, you know, I can end up in all kinds of back games or forward games or holding games or whatever. But so you got I don't five get guys there. back, another blot, easy take. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't get off to a good start. He makes the point, I fan, and then now it's just like he lost his market by a ton. Uh, but I mean, you know, I could have ended up in the 1-3 or the 1-5, or like he might not have even made an inner board point. So so are you beyond I, the point now where like this is starting to happen and then you go, maybe it was a pass? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I roll a good number, 4-2, to bring two in, you know, anchor and hit, and now I'm, like, fine. But I don't want to I don't want to just get stuck in the 1-2 game because, you know, even though the 1-2 game is, like, a decent back game, like, I really want a bridge. Like, the 1-2 game, it looks good when it's well-timed, but, you know, that's the... It's notoriously <laughs> to, hard to time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I, I hit with 1-6 earlier to... Uh, to try to prevent him from making his four and so that I could make a four point. But actually I think in the, with the second one, six, maybe 
stripping the midpoint might have been too much. Uh, but we'll see later. But I was just trying to like somehow make the 21 or the 18 or the 17 and double four is one of my worst. I don't think it's the absolute worst, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so what, uh, you just play it to the five point here? I don't really see. I think that's what I did. Like I'm trying to come up with some constructive move, but like I don't want to break my midpoint. And like I don't have two more fours to play if I just play down. So I end up coming to the five. Uh, he makes the eight. And yeah. Yeah, so the one two, you know, it always looks oh, this is five one. I think I hit and make the bar rather than like come out. If I come out, like I just give him all the initiative to do kind of whatever he wants. And fill in the yeah. four point, which would not be ideal. Yeah. I mean, my checkers are kind of getting split. You know, I have the back guys so far away from the front guys, but I'm hoping that you could roll like double three from the bar or something, you know, something good. Oh, and the two one. Yeah, I wanted to move the back guys, but I think making a four prime in front of him, you know, I can win going forward or just, uh, you know, even if I don't win going forward, I can make it hard for him. But he hits in the outfield, fills in his four point, escapes. So now I'm in really bad shape. You know, I'm behind by 100 pips, but. Uh, <laughs> but you have too many guys <laughs> on the 24. You need to start rolling right, some sixes. Right. right. This, is the, like this is the problem. Is yeah. Thinking about, you know, the back game in terms of how many pips you're behind, you know, like I'm, I'm in a whole lot of trouble. So from Gaz's perspective, you know, he is really just trying to. This is an interesting play. I think I would hit and go 12 to 7. I think you need to slot the 7. If you make that, then it just kind of breaks your forward position. Yeah, I mean, it leaves a few returns. But like. Those returns don't really win, though. Yeah. I mean, it would slow down. It would slow him way down for making the 7. Uh, so yeah, this is this is where the the one two game always runs out of timing, right? It's the best back game if you can get good timing, but that that is such a enormous caveat that. Uh, <laughs> so you're more likely to get a shot, but the shots come so much later. Um, you're fine if you get late shots. Like you know, you get you not only get a shot, you get many many late shots, but. The problem is uh, when he starts bearing in, you almost never have a strong board because you just need a ridiculous amount of timing to keep a board, right? Like yeah. uh, he kills his sixes, he kills his fives, and then you're just like, well, I was behind by 120 pips, but now my board is still crashing anyway. Exactly. You know? That's the problem <laughs> when they have like the full prime in front of you is that a lot of their right, numbers right. don't end up playing against the 1-2 game, and then their bear right. in ends up being slow. Right. But if you if you can somehow maintain a strong board, it's like the best back game for a long time. Uh, I'll take a 2-3 any day. <laughs> I'll yeah. take the 2-3 any day over the 1-2. <laughs> well, if you have good timing, the 1-2 is better, but yeah. So much easier to <laughs> but, time uh, the 2-3. Yeah, 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 yeah. From, the, from you know, most back end positions, it's so hard to get good timing. So he's considering volunteering a shot, which uh, I don't think is the right idea i mean this i guess his idea is that he's gonna leave fewer double shots if you fall or you know quadruple shots if he volunteers a shot now but you also just might never leave a shot at all in general right and it is like a double shot that he's volunteering and you know my board is like fine like i'd be happy to hit and at least save a backgammon or a gammon and you know maybe win the game i mean i can easily win the game going forward and you don't have any dead checkers yet, which is always a plus. Right, right. These games win more often than you think. Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> I've got scars <laughs> to this day. <laughs> Debit transfers from my accounts that prove that you can lose these. Yeah. And you don't mind uh, killing his numbers as he's bearing off, like because he just bears off slower. You know, It's worse than killing his numbers as he's bearing in. Um, 
But Gaz enters there, and now I have to try to contain this checker somehow. So I'm trying to put blots into his outfield. What ideas uh, are you using to decide where they go? Are you just like trying to put them on opposite I'm, colors, the same colors, like trying to stay a certain really, distance away? Are you blocking bad like game I don't really, numbers? No, I don't really know exactly. I don't really think about the same colors or opposite colors, but I don't know exactly what the best configuration is. I just know that they want to be in his outfield to like, so that when he comes out into my outfield, I'm going to have more shots and double shots. Uh, and with the same idea here, like, I kind of want to be like, keep checkers like eight to 10 to, you know, 12 away from his blot. Like, I don't really want to move 18 to 16, but like, I have to move it to somewhere, you know, uh, he, I seem to be missing all the shots. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I want to move, like, the front... Like, I want to keep the rearmost checkers where they are because those are going to be the easiest to contain him as he comes home. Oh, wow. But I have double to put something. And then the double fives, yeah. Yeah, the lone checker can always just get away with the, with a good roll. I think I started to move something, and then I was like, oh, I need to get off the backgammon because <laughs> he's only at six left. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so like, then let I me get out of that. here just in case he rolls doubles, yeah? Yeah, yeah, if he rolls doubles, I, I'm I'm actually in uh, in a serious amount of trouble, <laughs> so I have to get off the back end. And now the gammon is lost. Yeah. Uh, I guess I could still save it with a miracle, but uh, there's nothing there's nothing really going on here. That's the optimist in you right there. You go, you know what? I guess with maybe if I roll like <laughs> four or five dice right now <laughs> and I roll like a perfect Yahtzee with all, all five of my dice, I can get off of yeah, this. Double six, two, one, double six, two, one, double six, two. One, double <laughs> six, two. <laughs> I know people that would resign, not even, you know. <laughs> I came out with three six to duplicate fours, uh, and here I have a one to play. And again, I want to like duplicate four somehow. I think I don't want to play sixteen fifteen and give him a three, which doesn't really play for him. So I go six to five. I think I was looking at also eleven to ten, but I think six to five is better because I just have like no development if I go eleven to ten. Yeah, and then the normally I don't want to slot. All over the place too, you know. Yeah, normally I don't want to slot with the weaker board, but like this position improves so much more often compared to going 11 to 10, which just doesn't improve nearly as often, right? Here I make the five point if I get missed a lot of the time. It's a great follow-up uh, roll. I think I go 16, 13 just to not leave any shots. Yeah. I could have also left shots in my outfield, but then like, what's the point of that? You know, I mean, it's great if I get missed, but should, there's, there's a number of hits. Should he hit you here with the four? No, I don't think oh. so. He's the stronger board, or yeah, he's he's winning the race. He does, you know. I have the I have the stronger board. He doesn't want to just like leave a bunch of shots. I think his play is correct, making the two. We'll see later. <laughs> double oh, aces. Double oh, yeah. This was I. Uh, I kind of immediately rejected just hitting twice, and like now I'm trying to find the best way to improve my position. Uh, but then the last ace is awkward. <laughs> like, I can't make the bar and go six to five. Cause... So why did you reject hitting twice? Well, I just thought, like, double ace is such a good roll. Like, there should be some way to improve my prime, right? And it looks like there should be. Uh, but I didn't. I didn't... <laughs> Consider that because the last ace is so awkward, maybe I should take a second look at hitting twice. <laughs> I could have also done this. Uh, but then I'm breaking my eight and, you know, my four prime just becomes a three prime. Yes. Uh, we've looked at this. The, this isn't as good as the double hit. The double hit. Uh, yeah, the double hit is the best. And I guess the reason is because, you know, I just don't have a last ace to play. Like, if I could just make a four prime or make the four point and do nothing, that would be great. 
but <laughs> I have to I have to play another A somewhere. And I don't want to leave a double shot here. So I guess the best I can do is just hit twice and you know, try Hope to it works out. Yeah. 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 We hope for something better. I mean every other way. <laughs> it looks like, like it should be a good roll, but it's not as good as it looks. And this leaves more shots without putting the guy on the roof, you know? Right. Right. And then I mean, he gets it does to attack on better. the other side as well, which is yeah, yeah, that's never good. It does have a better structure, but you know, he he has a four point board, and I need to take some context, not just leave a, a a ton of shots. Two one should hit on the twenty one and probably play twenty four twenty two. I'm guessing. Whoa. Okay, so that's one thing about this site is that you're looking at the plays that they're thinking about and they haven't necessarily um, committed to that. Yeah, it's also, I find it a little bit hard to move the checkers on the site because um, they move a little bit differently from the way Galaxy does it. Yeah, and they like, definitely so do. Galaxy. I've only ever played on this site a couple times and it's, I found it to be difficult just because I don't have experience using it versus Galaxy where I just know how everything works. Yeah, normally I click on the points where I want the checkers to go to rather than the points I want them to move from. Yeah. Uh, well, so what about this cube here? Tricky. Looks like a good cube. I mean, I'm on the bar. He has a four point, four and a half point board. You know, after he covers and I fan, he lost his market by a lot. Double two shifts and comes down, and um, it's like too good, basically. But he can't hit me here. Uh, I think he should just bring two guys down. And I come in with a five, so that's nice. And now he has to, he has to come out and come down, and you know, I mean, even if he wasn't duplicating fours, maybe this would be the best play. But I don't really. I want to read double because you know I'm I'm trailing in the match, but I have to roll a four, right? I don't I don't have a double shot. I just have a single shot, basically. <laughs> so in these sh sorts of spots, I mean, even though it's a 15 point match, you would consider redoubling with a double shot with the way your prime was on the other side of the board. If I had like fours and threes, so if I had like 27 numbers, you know, maybe I could. But. Uh, yeah, I only had like 17 numbers or something, right? I don't know. Maybe maybe it would be too much anyway. So three, I think six. I think about this it. Is, uh... No, no, he hits me. Yeah, he hits yeah. me. Yeah, I can't I can't double well, after a hit. Well, if he does this, I would consider redoubling. Yeah, I don't know which one he chooses. Well, if he comes out, I have 22 numbers to hit, right? And I think I would consider redoubling there. But isn't he running out of time here? Like his his next six might need to cover and then hop out, or maybe he can. Yeah, you know, that's it's like he's running true, out of time. But, that's true, but I mean, even if, uh, you know, he rolled double fours and he still has like two or three rolls to roll a six. I thought about redoubling here, but I realized that. I could just come in and then redouble and he'd have a pretty good, like, that's the thing. Like he has plenty of time to roll a six, even if, and it, yeah, with the five one, uh, I just made like a play so that I could double next roll. If it was DMP, I would go 10 to nine, but, uh, but it's not. And I hold the cube. So I just figured I'll just double. <laughs> and this is a pass no? Yeah. The score, I guess. Because he's leading four zero, which really changes the dynamics of the. So how does it game. change the dynamic of the uh, the match a lot? Redoubling to four when he's up by four. What what changes it so much? Well, the the recube to eight is like almost dead, and uh, his gammons don't really matter very much, right? Like. It's hard for him to, it's very hard for him to, uh, you know, the difference between being up 8-0 or 12-0 is not that much. And uh, my, I don't really know the exact uh, match equities, certainly not as well as uh, 
some of the other guys. I just know that, like, uh, anytime you have the lead in the match, especially if it's, like, a four-point lead and, you know, the cube starts getting beyond the two level, it starts to be, like, a really, uh, really different from a money game, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we'll see some... We'll see some stuff coming up here, but uh, the uh, why did you choose that three over? Interesting. I don't really know. Over like an eight to four or the other one. I don't know. Like I think I might have played out with the other. Like the only thing I'm ever really considering in these spots is how double fives and double fours play because those are the only numbers that are gonna kill me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I like try to. I think they're. Sure I think they're that... more or less the the same, no matter how I play it. I mean, it's not I. Uh, good, but I think if yeah. you played the three out, then double fives would have hit on the open point. Oh, double fours. That's not good. That's true. But I could. I could also just make the two point with double fives. It's not like. I mean, you know, I would have to leave some stuff. Uh oh. I roll for three, and the only play is to hit him because I can't just bring two in if he rolls a six. He's winning the race. Oh, no. And I oh, no. <laughs> and he rolls a six. <laughs> and <laughs> so, just as no. I was saying, the only thing that kills you is double. Wait, what? Yeah. No, yeah. So, he's. He's nine away from the guy on the six, and he's 12 away from getting safe. Uh, and he is like a really strong position, right? Like, I need to hit a shot now, uh, or I'm just going to lose. But on the other hand, the score is 4 0, and he's holding a four cube, right? Um, so. In a money game, I was thinking I would just like probably drop because you know I I I thought it was a pretty easy take at the score. Like I thought about it kind of like if he rolls like a six two, let's say, and he comes to the seven point, I'll have like ten shots at him. Yeah, uh, and they don't always win, but they win almost all the time. He rolls double fives, so now I have 11 shots, but he was two men off. Uh, I could redouble, and, you know, I'm only risking whatever three away, 15 away is. Uh, Not but much. I'm a Not big, much. <laughs> big underdog to win the game also. All right, I have to hit, and then, I don't know. I, I Maybe I should have redoubled, but, uh, you know, if I don't have a closed board either, so... Uh, there's also some sort of fluke gammons, even though I should be able to save it. Two one. So being on the outside yeah. here, we slot the 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 one point with the ace, and then another two one. Uh, not yeah. Ideal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, if I'd come if I'd come closer with the ace, I would have saved. But I'm pretty sure two one is correct. <laughs> <laughs> And there's the gammon. And, the yeah, it's our gas wins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that was a quick one. Thank you yeah. for coming. <laughs> uh, let's um, let's open up XG and, and do like a, a little mini deep dive into this two-game 15-point match I just witnessed. Sure, where we missed sure. the first six moves, which just so happened to be one-third of the match. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to come back with the XG in just a minute. All right, we are back with the analysis section. We are here with XG. Our videos are gone. Uh, and let's go through the match. And let's just see how these two games transpired according to the bots. Let's see the summary at the end. You played a... Hold on. There we go, the entire session. You played a 3.01 according to my calculations. And Gaz played a 4.61. So here's how the first six okay. moves went. <laughs> they had 3-1 followed by 6-3 split. Yeah. And 
then we had a 2-1 to play. And yeah, I thought about this move. Uh, I really wasn't sure which was better, to either lift the plot or go 13-11. Yeah, uh, the computer doesn't care so much. Uh, mine on plus, it just says point zero zero seven. But yeah, I guess the hint yeah. going to the five is a little bit better for reasons Thomas Tenlin will know. Um, well, it leaves a lot fewer shots, you know, especially the six from the bar is uh, not an especially good roll for him. Like if he rolls like three, six, four, six, one, six. Yeah, I guess not allowing his sixes to be good is generally a good idea to keep in mind, right? Yeah. But then, um, you know, obviously sometimes he doesn't roll those numbers and you would like to make it with all of his right. like, smaller numbers. But it's nice to unstack the midpoint. If I didn't have five checkers on the midpoint, like if I roll a 6 2, I would for sure lift. Rather yeah, than, uh, yeah. All right. And then we had his 4 2 reply, which was right in and down, followed by the 4 1 double hit. Right. And then he going rolled the his blitz. ace. Yeah, I know, right? L things are going yeah. good, right? Yeah. <laughs> then he rolls yeah. the ace. Right. And I rolled a 5-2. And uh, I kind of continued my same plan of trying to blitz and stop him from cleaning up his four blots. But I guess I should just remake the eight point. Uh, this one is a little bit hard to see for me because I'm leaving, you know, direct sixes and fours as well as everything on the other side. But I do make a better structure. I don't yeah, know. I thought tough. giving him four fanning rolls was uh, was kind of nice. I'm like, I mean, uh, there's just so many blocks, and I think hands. one of the things the computer might be considering is like these two down checkers on the other side on the 15 and 16. How they really like to build, and they can't yeah. hit you and build at the same time. And so maybe they're thinking just create structure. Yeah. So like all of his sixes and fours are duplicated. I mean, he would still rather hit than build. Yeah. Because, you know, hitting does multiple good things at once. Right? Stops me from making a four prime. I think, you know, the structure after playing 13 8 is just like so nice. If I get missed, like, even if he builds his five point, I can then just make a four prime instead of having, you know, a two prime. Yeah. And he does roll one of those sixes uh, after the yeah. hit, right? He, so you do, you do hit. You yeah, I did hit. Two six. You rolled two back. six. And here's those boxes you talked about. Yeah. Yeah, I fanned. It's not. Not it's ideal. Not a, yeah, yeah. And then he rolls. <laughs> Any entering number would have been okay. Yeah, I mean, you fan, you're on the roof. He then rolls the one six, right? Mm hmm. And so, the question of yeah. what to do here. Is. The problem with coming out, like coming out is uh I guess the problem with coming out is you just have so many blots and I have so many blots. I can make the 17. I didn't even think about that move. <laughs> that would for one sure is, have uh, off the radar. <laughs> 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 I it's, it's hard to see to, to yeah. make the 17 when you have the ace to hit 23 22 right away right right like it makes sense to clean up blots when you're outboarded but also i would have thought you want to put two men on the roof rather than one because you know you don't want me to play my full role um but the 17 point is a nice point yeah, and the double hit would have been hard for me attacking deep on the two, but I guess, you know, trying to deny him from making it. But yeah, I, I don't know if I could have pulled the trigger on that one. I probably would have been in an even worse camp. I think I would have picked the uh, the 13 to 7 play and just played. Yeah, the problem with 13 to done. 7 is just you have so many blocks. And, uh, you know, let's say I roll like 5-1 or something, and now you have, you know, problems on all sides of the board. That's um, that's thinking logically, though. What about <laughs> emotionally, you know? What about I, I mean, when you I, roll your next number, your 3-6? It looks better then, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> no, the nice the nice thing about 8-2 to two is not only that you stop him from making the two-point, but also that, you know, it's, uh, it's just another man up that gives you more time to either hit the last guy on the 11-point or you know, build more point, build your five point or whatever, right? It just, uh, it kind of puts another man up and gives you more time to do stuff. 
And so here's this cube. Uh, let me plus plus this really quick, which is going to slow this computer down. Yeah, that's interesting. I uh, I didn't really mind the cube. I thought it was a decent cube, actually. Um, but he is outboarded, which is so it's like pretty much exactly borderline. And it is a super easy take. Yeah. Um, because the, you have the five point made. Yeah, yeah, because I have the five point made. So I have I have the stronger board, right? Like he can you know, let's say he makes his five point, but then I hit him from the roof. You know, if I only had the six point, it wouldn't really uh cost nearly as much as if I have the six and the five point. Uh and you also do have the twenty four point made on the other side of the board, which means like you really it could be right, bad, there, but you won't ever be yeah, there's a lot of directions this game can go. Like I say, he could make his five, and then I could just hit a fly shot, and then like I could win going forward. He could, you know, uh, try to hit me, and then I make a deep back game. He could, you know, hit me, and then I come in with a double. Uh, I could make a high anchor, and then just have some sort of holding game. You know, it's still just like way too early for me to consider passing, but like no matter what, I'm never going to just get completely closed out. Mm. Might have a terrible ace point game, but at least I won't be closed out. So he rolls the 5-3, and he makes the point. And That's your, a good your, play. Your, your, your plays are, your bar, uh, are forced. <laughs> yeah, he lost his market after, after the sequence, uh, after he makes the three point, and I only enter one. Because yeah. now he's just shooting to make the five, and you know, he could make, if he rolls a joker double, he could have a four point board, like, you know, instead of, a, instead of, you know, he goes from a one point board to a three point board or a four point board. And um, it's still not like I'm dead here by any means, but he did, he did lose his market. Yeah. And then he rolls three, two. And of course he hits twice. Um, Makes sense. Can't let you make that. And yeah, and you roll the four. Put as many blocks up as possible. Now it's starting to get very bad. Just trying to close the four, and you roll the four two, which is like a perfect number. Right. So now I have some sort of a back game, and you know, plus more vig on top. Somehow I try to win going forward or turn it into a better back game. And if you're able to make the one, two, and four game here, like. It's going to yeah. be very, very, I probably very won't. difficult for White bringing this home. Yeah, I probably won't have the timing to keep all three points, but it just gives me like the flexibility to play off any of the points. You know, sometimes I do get hit, and then I have the timing to keep all three if I get hit like multiple times. And then he regrets sometimes giving I... you the cube the second you <laughs> you make all three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's when I would, well, I would you know, possibly if I have go all favor. three. And the and good timing. If I had all three and good timing, I'd actually be like a favorite uh, to win the game. And you know, it is so hard to bring home against something like that. Yeah. So he rolls four three here. Uh, this is interesting. Yeah. Not making the nine, making the fourteen. I guess just playing with two blots. Well, instead yeah. Of three. Two blots. The nine point is nice, but the fourteen point is also nice, and um, I don't so much want to hit from the twenty one. Although I guess I will if I roll like one five or two five. But if I roll four five, I don't want to break it. I don't want to hit, um, yeah. yeah, it just leaves fewer shots, and it uh, it makes the fourteen and thirteen, which are kind of bearing on the the points in. White's outfield. So, you know, he'll have more ways to improve points in his outfield later on. Cool. And 6 1 hits back. And now, yeah, so I hit, one. I hit with 6 1 to kind of uh, stop him from stop him from making the four point and to hope to like build a build a bridge, you know, either the 21 or the 18 or whatever. But I should have, you know, I, I, I did this kind of consistently with my last six one, right? I'm trying to stop him from making the four, and I want to make the four myself or build some some other sort of outfield point because I don't want to get stuck in the one-two because 
you know, as we see the one, two just requires a ridiculous amount of timing. If it doesn't have any other points to go along with it. Uh, the bot really prefers not having the four checkers stuck on the 24 and just the freedom yeah. and flexibility to try to so even I'm, time this game. Right. I'm stripping the midpoint, which is a problem. And one of the ways I could, you know, I didn't want to play bar 18 last time because that would take the spare off of the 24 point, which I could use to like make the 21 or whatever. Here, if I play bar 18, I still have a spare on the 24. So I could actually just make the 18 uh, and I'm slotting the 18 on top of it. So like he could hit me on the 18 and I roll six back and now I can hit back without breaking my anchor. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I could also make the 18 in some other ways. I don't know exactly what they are, but, you know, slotting the 18 is not a bad way to make it. Yeah. And I really wouldn't mind having, like, the 1-2-7 game either. Like, you know, maybe it's not as good as the 1-2-4, but it's, like, perfect. It's, like, you know, a perfect bridge. But I think it's, like, a lot of what you were saying before is, like, being able to time this game means not also having a bunch of guys trapped behind the eventual prime anyway. So like, even if you're just throwing yeah. material into the outfield and he hits you again, that's not as big of a deal as you having four guys on the 24, because you're not worried so much about getting hit anymore um, as you are being able to kind of time this game. And it's going to yeah. be difficult to win going forward with like a play like 13 to seven. That's true. I mean, yeah, I wasn't trying to just, like, keep him on the par forever. I was just trying to, like, gain some tempo uh, to, like, make the 21 or make the 18 or something. But, you know, I, I, I do think I should have realized that hey, I'm stripping the midpoint and I'm leaving four guys on the 24. You know, maybe that's not the ideal. But I wonder uh, if it were, like, a, a 2-6 or something, should I still... Uh, let me, oh, let me yeah, no, that's more see interesting. if I can check sure. that play. Is it more like a enter on the 23, come out with the 24, or would you... Yeah, I think, I think it's still come out with the 24. This is where I wish I could go, like, Control-C, Pace, Control-V, and we could take a look yeah, at it. Yeah, so it is, uh, it is coming out from the 24, but it, the margin is much, much closer. Okay, cool. So, so it it's still like does almost, favor the flexibility. Almost yeah, yeah, it's like close. it's like almost borderline, but coming out from the twenty four makes sense. Yeah, stripping the midpoint just uh, it's not really what you want to do. All right, and then he rolled uh, midpoint. Three, one. You know, until I build a better bridge, like the eighteen or the seventeen, like the midpoint is my only bridge. You know, so yeah, I don't want to get rid of it if I can possibly avoid it. And then we saw double this four double four, which was yeah. miserable. Yeah. There were so many more numbers that. Yeah, I was better. hoping for a three or a two or a six or something. <laughs> One. <laughs> and the six five blocks your your two point. Makes five sense. one here was right by a mile. Um, yeah. Blocking the seven eight. I want to get off the twenty four, but you know this is a problem with having four guys on the twenty four, right? And like, there's there's you know, some numbers I, here that could be annoying. He could roll, you know, like two three three four, like yeah, these double numbers three is double bad. three is the worst. Um, but yeah, he can he can get stuck fairly easily. You know, he comes in with just like even if he comes in with like uh, two one or something, you know, it's not so easy for him to play. Like he can stack on the twenty-two or slot on his home board or split everything wide open, but like it's never gonna be like a perfect roll, you know? Yeah. All right, so you hit and you came in. Um five four, of course, hops out. Four. Two one makes the point. He rolls yeah. down fives, which is the pretty best. good. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it comes it's pretty out pretty strong. The four stops the uh, stops all that. This one five five one is fours. like the worst entry too, but it's, it's fine. Five four, yeah, he should have slotted the seven. Um, yeah, um, you know, getting hit. He should be concerned about. Well, I mean, getting hit on the seven would be bad. Uh, well, it depends you don't want with what with what like one five. You're gonna oh yeah, you know, one five. Like, I'm, 
You know? I mean, I guess I, I guess I would anyway. But like, you know, you're not really concerned about getting hit with one five. No, but like one six and two six, you don't want to get hit with or two five. Yeah. Well, well, uh, one interesting thing though is like if you get to make the seven and you don't have the eight, then his next six, you know, sometimes he he has to come off. Yeah. So the the improvement from making the seven is so huge that you should just like take some risk to make it right. Like, I mean, you know, even if you get hit, you're not like, you know, losing the game. It it slows you way down and you don't like it, but like, uh, you know, if you get missed, which happens 30 times out of 36, uh, you know, the improvement is so huge. It's like, you can make it with any ACE, any 11 or nine. And, uh, you know, the making the seven is a huge amount better than making the eight. And double fours fans, six five, of course, then uh, just makes the seven huge improvement. Yeah. Four two is forced almost. I mean, it's not forced, but it is better to just make the two than to put a checker on the ace. Yeah, I start to kill my fives also. Um, four two. If I roll like six five or double five, I'm much happier this way. Double twos, interesting. I'm looking at the final configurations here of this versus this, trying to figure out why uh, one might be better than the other. And I like your play <laughs> because it at least makes I sense roll, to me. So what's going on here? If I roll double three, my play is better. If I roll three, two, I think my play is better. But I'm not sure. If I roll three, one, it's more or less a transposition. Yeah. If I just roll like six three. I think my play is probably better. I'm not sure extreme is the best in these like super deep back games. Yeah. How would you play three uh, one? Three one, I would probably make the ace. I was wondering if there was any merit to putting another guy on the twenty three and just oh. putting the three there, yeah? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's better. Because I need to I need to get off the twenty four. Yeah. And if I if I had like spares like four and four instead of five and three, then I'd probably make the ace. But, uh, you know. You play six, three like this. I, I like this giving the shot play, and I, I, I make these pretty frequently. Um, yeah, this is a good play. Like, um, uh, you know, it's, it's nice if I roll a six. Like, you just get uh, yeah, slow way down. You're you're hurting you're hurting Blue's timing. I mean, you want him to right. roll the six, come around, maybe catch the guy. Maybe he rolls another six afterwards as right. well, and he has to break the point. And then you right. still have all of this structure here. You know, you want him to break before he has the freedom to leave. If you leave a shot, you know, and he has the freedom to leave, you know, he could start to recirculate. But if you leave a shot when you still have the bar, I mean, things end up working out a little bit better. It's not a big deal, but it is quite a common idea. Yeah, I remember yeah. playing a match in Chicago and doing something similar, and the guy goes, well, if that's right, I don't know anything about backgammon. And I just go, <laughs> oh, yeah. A few of these things might be true. <laughs> We're not sure. <Yeah. laughs> so 5-4 yeah, doesn't move. That's, move. that's actually shot. a very good roll. And yeah, double fours um, is bad. I mean, it's not success. bad. But it's My little... sixes, fives, and fours are all killed, so it's only like the three and the two that are really bad for me. Yeah, yeah, but double, double fours. Double would you two. would you consider that a good roll or a bad roll? That's not a good roll for white. Bad idea. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, it lets me out with sixes and fives. Like white just wants me to crunch my board yeah. more. And you haven't broken uh, anything. Have... Yeah, yeah. Like uh, you know, this this can turn into a a real. Uh, decently well-timed game again if i can somehow remake my six and five you know uh white white bears off a lot slower than it looks against the one two right he bears in slower but he also bears off slower so yeah so five four four two five two uh six four forced to leave a shot and six one. Oh, interesting okay um, seven to six, and actually, let me plus this one as well. Yeah. Put the put the the first and third on plus plus just for the. Okay. Uh, it's gonna slow it down a bit, but 
bear with us. So. Okay. Okay, so it's closer. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, seven to six, I like playing to, um, you know, to start to rebuild the six point. I just thought 24, 23 took precedence to put a spear on the 23 and, you know, maybe get off a few backgammons or something. Mm. Uh, so that, you know, if white leaves another shot, I could hit it from the 23 without breaking it. Okay. I'm fine to break the 23 once I like have a board, but I don't want to, I don't want to break the 23 while I'm still trying to rebuild my board at the same time. When his board is crunching, though, it's like much less likely. And since this guy is in the outfield, maybe you have a little timing, and it, it shouldn't, in theory, be so hard to to get off. Whereas slotting this, I guess, is is ideal. But like, yeah, no, I mean, that's very tough play. These yeah. little conflicting yeah. ideas. Sometimes you just flip a coin in your head, and sometimes it's one right. way, sometimes it's another. But you know, if you're in a back game and you're within, you know, 1%, one and a half percent of what the best play is, it's not a big deal, but it's fun to try to figure out. Right. If you, you know, if it's like everything points to one play and you make the other play, then that's like a kind of a bad conceptual sign. But like yeah. here, I'm trying to balance like two conflicting things. Like I see seven to six is good. And, you know, 24 to 23 is also good. You know, which one is better? I'm not exactly sure. At least we're staying out of the red area. Right, right. <laughs> so he plays three one, of course. This mm-hmm. he takes the guy off. You come out with six three. Right. So, so why why did you choose to come out with the front checker instead of the guy on the twenty four? What's the the thought? Yeah, I almost that? always want to come out from the front. Um, breaking the twenty. 20- Three is fine. Breaking the 24 is usually not fine. Uh, and, you, you know, mean, maybe I... Like, are you talking I, about in situations later where you get a shot and you have to hit? Yeah. You'd still yeah. like to be able to have the 24 point for this life after death scenario where you might generate another shot, whereas if you have the two point, it's not nearly yeah. as good. Yeah, not just not just like I might get shots later, but also like say he comes in and hits me on the ace and then like, you know, or he comes in and then like he makes his ace point and now it's like, you know, he might even have a, you know, a, a relatively strong board and I don't want to be, you know, on this 23 point, I'd much rather be on the 24. Yeah, because that's a, a much uh, bigger mistake than I would have uh, mm-hmm. thought it to be. So no, that's a pretty I good. Might I'll, I'll, I'll definitely... Save an occasional backgammon by coming out from the twenty-four, but it's like almost the same. Uh, you know, the, the checkers are, you know, basically the same no matter which one I come out from. Oh, that's good. I don't think I breaking the front one. I also want to be able to break the front one just to give him more numbers to play. So, like, say he rolls like, uh, say he just clears his five points somehow. I don't know exactly how. Uh, but then you want to give him a good two to play. So maybe he has right. to play like 21 to 23 at some point with the deuce and right. give you a shot there. Yeah. Yeah. Like breaking the front one is almost always better than breaking the back one. The only exceptions are like if there's some like tactical consideration, which, you know, usually there's not. Yeah. All right. So he plays 6 1. And yeah, this is where he volunteers the shot. Instead of just yeah. four to three, it's not that big of a. It's not like crazy. Let me I'll plus plus it, but I yeah, just don't know why you would leave a shot. Worst. Not here, at least. There, I don't know. Yeah, there. Um, there are situations where you want to volunteer a shot. Normally, it's not once you're down to three points. Like normally, but it's like when earlier you're, like, when he had the opportunity yeah. to leave one on the eight point where all the other guys were still primed. But I don't know if I've seen it. Yeah, that's a little bit. That's a little bit this. different. Um, I mean, that's like volunteering a shot so that you want to be hit and recirculate. Yes. There, there are also situations where you volunteer a shot just so that you'll have an easier time clearing, even though you don't want to get hit. Uh, but. Normally, it's not when you're down to three points. Normally, it's when the guy has like a bunch of blots in his board. So, like, you know, hitting is 
you know, even though you don't want to get hit, like you still have like plenty of returns and stuff. And also you're going to be very awkward if you make the other play. Mm. Uh, so like if you have an outside prime and like you're stripping your last spare or something and like, you know, you could play seven to six and be like, uh, you know, if you had like the three, four, five, six, seven, and you could like play seven to six and volunteer a shot or, or play, you know, four, uh, four to three or something and stack everyone or something like that, you know? And sometimes you'll play seven to six to just like start burning off faster. I mean, maybe not against the ace deuce, but you know, against some other back games, like the one, three, maybe. So, five, but I, you know, I don't think you'd do it when you're down to three points almost ever because you're just so likely to clear anyway. I mean, I guess his yeah. idea was that he didn't want to volunteer. Yeah, the quadruple shots with like six four or five four or whatever, or triple shots. But you might also um, just never leave a shot. You could just right, like right. six five. And, and if I hit this down. shot, like it's a big improvement for me. Like not only do I hit a shot, but he also only has five men off. Like if he leaves a shot later, he might leave a shot with like ten guys off, you know, and then even if I hit, like I'm like still losing. Still a dog, yeah. Yeah. Even if I hit and close him out, I'm like pretty far behind. So 5-1, you do hop off the 24 here. Yeah, here I go 7-6 to six because, you know, I don't really have another constructive ace. Okay. So this is where it's a big mistake. Oh, where seven I don't to six, yeah, but the 5, I'm saying you came off the 24 with the 5 here where, like, the prior... Oh, I just want to get off the back end, basically. Yeah. I okay. mean, and, you know, put triggers in the outfield. I mean, the other plays are also okay. It's just they probably just lose more back end. Okay. Uh, double ones, double threes, four threes. Maybe make my board. And three one. Don't know why. Oh, maybe five two. Cover five two and one six. And one six, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, I just want checkers in his outer board just because that's usually the best place for checkers, but. You know, I it, makes, it makes sense for, where you get just yeah. directs instead of directs. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. One, four, five, two. This is interesting. So, I understand you want to stay on the 24 for sure. Right. Right. And you're looking for covering numbers in the outfield. Why did you right. choose this play over any others? Like, I don't know. I could see some people making the 14 and keeping this um, just in case he rolls like, I don't know, double ones or something stupid. But Yeah, I pay off to double ones. It's true. But I really want the checkers to be spread out in his outfield. Like, if I make the 14, then they're like stacked on one point and like there's just a bunch of numbers that only leave me like a single shot or like many fewer shots right like say he rolls just like you know six one or whatever <laughs> you know uh five five two or five one or something he's gonna come out into the outfield and like i need to hit so i want the checkers to be spread out in his outer board so like 21 16 is like a very natural five yeah. And then I need to play a two somewhere. Uh, I don't know if I would play 23, 21 or just, you know, not play a two if I had the option. But uh, I don't really have the option. And all the okay. other twos are like even more destructive. Yeah. Right. Okay. Like making the 14 is okay. It blocks is six, three and five, four. But, you know, uh, all the other numbers where he would like come out and leave. Uh Many shots, you know, four two, six two, six four, stuff like that. I'm just losing a bunch of a bunch of shots. And three one is basically forced, uh, and double twos. Interesting. So one versus the other. You plus plus this one also. Yeah, definitely. It's an interesting play. My idea was... Oh, okay, it's nothing. Your play's the best. 
I don't know if it's the no, best. No, his play is the best. The bots, it's very... <laughs> but it's, it's close now, at least, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, these these containment plays are always, like, super tricky because there's so many possible legal plays and, like, you know, tactics prevail over strategy and, like, you know, you don't really... It's very hard to figure out which what the best one is. Like, my thought was just, like, a block is... Is fives, especially double fives, is like a massive swing, and uh, and then I'll also come up at the back, so I'll try to catch him as he, you know, if he just rolls like a four one or you know four four two or whatever, I'll have like a lot of coverage. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean they're they're super close, right? Like your play also just stops the game killer double fives, but it also gives no no triple shots on six five. Yeah, um, so it gives him a seven to hit me instead of um, instead of uh, just staying somewhere in the outfield. Yeah, right? staying somewhere and or exposing another block, right? So like six one five two actually expose a second block. Oh wow. Uh. On the other hand, on my play, four one three two expose the second block. So it's it's four numbers either way. Um, but I think I think part of the thing is when I move from the twenty three, I also lose a bunch of coverage of uh, some of the other numbers. Like if he rolls like let's say six four, or, uh. Even just like six two, you know, if he rolls like a if he rolls like an eight, I'll just have um, fours and twos hmm. and a seven instead of sixes and fours and a seven, which is like a lot of shots. Sixes and fours are a ton. So, but yeah, like I say, it's tricky to figure this all out. I just kind of look at the board and make a play that looks natural, you know, and legal. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, legal. <laughs> and uh, five three. Yeah, this five three seems pretty clear. Obviously, we're not going to do anything that's going to leave a shot and nothing hits. And then, of course, yeah. he rolls double fives, and you come out with the four two, getting off potential BGs. He rolls yeah. two one, pick and pass, and then this is just over. Yep. Gammon lost, and into the final game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so let me um oh look at this. With whatever plus okay. pluses I did, your PR went down. Look at this, huh? Nice. I saved like uh Half like thirty percent of my PR, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty it's pretty strong. So three two split five four. This is just technical knowledge, it hits. All right, we want to hit loose on the four point to you know fight for the high points in their board. 3-6 comes out, 5-3 makes the ace, which is clear. 4-1, the slotting play is very clear. It's nice. Yeah, again, um, normally I don't want to slot when I have the weaker board, but it's such an efficient use of checkers, and the other one is not. It's so. funny because uh, one of the matches of yours I was looking at the other day between Jonas Seawald in Las Vegas there was another instance of this like situation, not when you were coming in, but when you had the opportunity to hop out into the outfield with one of these, like hop out with a five and then slot the mm-hmm. the five to duplicate the ace sort of plays. There was a, there was a, an opportunity to do a very similar play like this then. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope I didn't miss it, whatever it was. Yeah, no, it was missed. It was missed. So that's why <laughs> okay. that's the only reason okay. why it stuck out to me. <laughs> <laughs> that it was actually missed. And it's funny because I remember the first time I ever saw a play like this, it was playing Abe in the Chouettes in New York. And he mm-hmm. kind of looked at it the way Abe does with his face, the way it is, you know, and then he just slots it. And I, I look at it and of course I take a picture and I go home and now all of a sudden all I see are these plays and they, mm-hmm. they pop up frequently when, you know, you got a guy on the 16 and then using the ace to slot the the five. Yeah. I think maybe one is like a three two split. Uh, I can't remember exactly. Something something three, followed six, by one. five one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe yeah. six one followed by five one. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. That sounds about right. Like that. Thomas Tenland would know <laughs> for yeah, sure. That's, 
<laughs> he, he knows like every third roll. I know like, I don't know, 73% of all the third rolls. <laughs> Not that I didn't look at a hundred percent of them, but his memory is better than mine. <laughs> um, so five, one down in split six, three. Yeah, it's clear. Six four, okay, makes the two. I was talking about yeah, hitting, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a moron. Um, no, uh, three. No, one. I mean it's uh, it's you know making the two is just safe and yeah, and he's just know. up in the race and it's without any risk and you have a better priming structure. I mean, over the board, I probably would have made the two, but you know sometimes in commentary yeah. you get a little spicy. Yeah, yeah, you get a little <laughs> spicy. And the so double ones, the double one. yeah, we saw this one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, just I just rejected hitting right away, and I should have probably like after I started considering that all the other moves weren't as nice as I as I thought they might be initially. I, I should have like gone back to the double hit and been like, okay, maybe I could just make this move. <laughs> yeah, because there there was always the leftover stupid ace, unless of course you just make the the seven, which is still you know uh, a mistake. Right. Breaking and the eight. It just leaves so yeah. many more shots, and there are the numbers that are going to hit the ace, but like in every other variation, they could hit you somewhere else or attack you on the four and then there would be another blot exposed somewhere, you know, it would just be a little yeah. bit here. The I leave 11 turn. shots and my position is uh, much harder to clean up and weaker positionally, but you know, every other play leaves like 25 shots or something. So, you know, I don't really want to do that. Yeah. Or, more. You know, maybe even more. more. <laughs> yeah. <right>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the four one, of course, and the three six seems clear, and then the right. two one. This is so interesting. Twenty four really... to twenty one is actually not right, and the best play was to play thirteen eleven four three. That's a tough one to find. I, I mean... agree. Wow. <laughs> wow. I go. Yeah. No, this play looks can... clear. I would do this in a heartbeat. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can see some of the logic, but uh, it's not it's not so easy to find over the board. Like, I I I think the idea is like you know he only has a, a three to hit back on, it. so the four the four doesn't really do very much to enter, unless it's four one or four three or double four, and you have a double shot at him next time plus plus fives to cover threes ones fives all work if he fans. Right, and if you do twenty four twenty one, if you do twenty four twenty one, then he will have threes to anchor and fours to hit back, and it will be harder to uh, roll super well next time. Like you'll have a four to cover, but you won't have like super good shots. I think the main He's, thing is to be uh... These five yeah, block plays really are, are difficult for me to find. I don't Yeah, know. yeah. I think over the board I would have just played twenty four twenty one because, you know, it looks so natural to like strip away the twenty one point. You know, you don't get trapped yeah. behind a five prime. You send the second guy back, you know, you're now you're at the right. edge. There's right. But uh it's it's more about uh tactical considerations and uh you know, you leave you leave basically twenty good numbers from the bar if you hit, and if you if you hit on the twenty one, and if you hit on the three point, you only leave like uh, sixteen good numbers, uh, or no less, fourteen, something like that. I mean, yeah, yeah, four I, one double four, four one double four into three. It's hard for numbers. me to, um, it's hard for me to see it even now. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, it's really not a play that I would normally find. Uh, I can just, you know, kind of understand, you know, looking at the extreme yeah. analysis. My <laughs> opponent's just going like, to roll 4-1, and I'm going to be like, why didn't I hit that again? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, he rolls 4-1, and now you have two guys trapped behind a 5 prime. <laughs> yeah, but I guess I, I guess the other way, 4-1 will double hit you anyway. I mean, it, it's not that great in particular... I think I would anchor with four one. I'm not sure. I think I think I would just make the twenty one. But uh, I could double hit. I don't know. Both are good. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Anchor. 
Interesting. Um, but yeah, like the 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 thing about uh, yeah, the thing about hitting on the twenty one is just like anchoring with a three is also very strong. Even if I roll like three one and fan with one checker. Yeah. Now you have two blots behind a four prime. You have to make the four. You know, like you're just such a long way from home that you know you 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 have a long way to go. And if he fans, I guess your numbers work well. Your fives cover. Your ones and threes step up. Your sixes hop out. You've got another very very, very diversified on a fan. Yeah. I think the main thing is just you reduce the number of rolls that are good. Right. You go from twenty like the three. The three anchoring is like very strong. Yeah. So you go from 20 good rolls to, to 14 good rolls. Yeah, but, I mean, he rolls a three. He's, he's, he's a favorite probably, maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess I guess so. Even if I fan with one checker, it's like, maybe I'm not a favorite, but like it's it's a very decent game. 6-1, and then we had this double take here. So he's up four points. Yeah, this is a good cube, and I think if the match were even, I would have passed. But uh, already the 4-0 lead becomes pretty sub- significant, even though it's uh, playing to 15. Um, wow. Yeah, a lot of uh, my recube is much stronger than usual, and a lot of his threat is Gammon's. And, you know, I get him quite a lot of recubes with a 4-prime. Wow, he wins forty-one percent gamins here. I guess you just have a lot of material on the outside, yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. the real where the gamins come from. Not necessarily even just like obviously if these guys get closed out, but like it's just so much freight on the outside. Right. I mean, like let's say he if he doesn't necessarily complete a closeout, but just like makes a five-point board and somehow scrambles home. Uh, you know, maybe he hits me once or twice along the way. Then, like, you know, I still have a million checkers to move in the outfield. Yeah. Is there any way to... Um, I mean, you can just look at the numbers and tell that it's not good for money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do win fairly often. That's the that's the power of the... Yeah. You know, the, the thing is, in this part. position, I, I just see all the wins, and, and like, I... <laughs> I, I I sometimes get a little optimistic, you know. Yeah, and I can see my path <laughs> to victory instead of uh, losing these 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 big gamins. Sometimes. I uh, mean, the thing is, you know, the match the match score can make it somewhat easier sometimes. Uh, you know, for money, I would have I would have passed, but like, you know, it might have been. As obvious, uh, you know, if you're just like trailing like six zero or something, then it's just like a pretty easy take, just because you know, you know, like you gotta take games where you can like win when you're trailing in the match, you know. Yeah. So three one, of course, he just covers six two fan three six runs to safety six four fans. Oh, you're doing well. Uh, double yeah, twos. I- oh, <laughs> switch. Okay, so you're dead. Five two enters with one, and the four three was a big mistake. You said this that you should probably just play two down. Um, yeah, um, you're leaving five one anyway, so you're only leaving one extra number by coming two down, and you're really giving yourself many more attackers well, five, for the five. Well, if you play okay, so five one hitting in the outfield is much better than hitting in the inner board. I'm not even gonna hit in the inner board uh, if he plays two down. I'm going to play. Oh, I guess I will because he has the blots. But, like, you know, it's it's really not strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hitting in the outfield is great, you know. It sends another guy back. It leaves no shots. Like, uh, And there's no, yeah. like, real retaliation for you against that guy that's there. Whereas if you were to enter and, like, there's a number to hit in the outside, like, are you even going to do that? Yeah, I mean, I guess I would with, with five, five, five. double fives. Five four. I just don't have another play anyway, and I mean, I guess I could go. No, seven there's to another three. play. You could just play to the three I could go point. Seven to three. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but I, <laughs> and I, then just hope you you get another shot when he breaks the eleven against you. You know. Yeah, that actually is like possible. Double fives is like very good, but double fives is a great roll anyway. 
you know? Uh, and it's just it's nicer when uh, to have three guys shooting at my guy on the five when I fan, which happens, you know, 70% of the time I'm going to fan. Uh, and, you know, you'd, you'd rather have the three guys shooting at it, especially the four, which doesn't play on your side of the board. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, being out here where you might not even hit with some numbers, we're here where you know, the five one is like, yeah, the best you can hope for. And there's no right like five, retribution. five one is actually you know much better than five four, right? Yeah, like, definitely. It's five, not even close. Five four, I don't even like know what I would do. <laughs> I know what I would do. I'm playing to the three point, and it might be wrong, <laughs> but I don't like getting gammoned. How about this? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. Like maybe, maybe I'm just thinking too much about it, and maybe at the score. No, it's I probably better. Just, to go to three point. We got we got a five point <laughs> board versus a two point board, and it just yeah, seems yeah. really bad to get hit back. You just lose yeah. all the games with the gammon. <laughs> five six. At the MC, I guess I would hit, but you know. And here, the fours are duplicated. Right. Double threes. Six three. And two, uh, three, six. Ah, it was huge to hit on the five, despite him running yeah. out of timing. Massive. I guess I probably don't have a read double if he comes out looking at those numbers. But I was like considering, like, okay, I'm going to have 22 shots and, you know, 22 shots that also slot the back of my prime and whatever, <laughs> you know, so. Um, but if he hits, I only have 11. I'm like, uh, and 25 number is fan, you know? I mean, okay, he's running out of time in the sense that, you know, it's hard for him to make the closeout and come out. But, like, he doesn't need to necessarily do everything. Like, he just needs to not get hit and then, you know, hope to win later, right? Like, Yeah, it's possible to roll, you know, more sixes. <laughs> you know, yeah. They say they he don't grow on trees, but... If you get hit with those twenty something numbers, you're just far more gammons by yeah. hitting. <laughs> yeah. I uh, mean, if you consider how many gammons are one, it's gonna be uh not even uh it's like point. almost zero by coming out and you know, a lot by hitting. No, it's true. So you jack up your gammon wins and you jack right. up your actual wins. Well, it seems seems clear. Right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> seems clear. <laughs> Sometimes you're all double six too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, some people do. Yeah. Uh, double fours. That's it. That's a Justin four, number. Make a draw. Double six fans for. Two. But you know, even so, after he rolls double fours, he can still roll six the next roll, right? Like you yeah, know. Yeah. So. I have one. Yeah, I think I would go ten to nine if it were double match point. But. Uh, you know, I don't. I, I'm about to cube next roll, so that seems like a, a massive overplay. Yeah, because I mean, if he rolls a six, you can still win by catching him in the outfield. Whereas the other way, you're just kind of opening up gammon losses to yourself again for no reason. Right, right. <laughs> and you should, in theory, be able to win with the cube on the next roll, provided he doesn't roll a six. So, like, in twenty five yeah, I mean, of those takes. variations, it's it's you win. Even if he happens to have a take, like, you know, I don't really, I don't really care that much. You know, it's like almost the same as the pass. Right? So 5-5 five, five, followed by your redouble here. And this was a pass. Yeah. So for money, I think it's a, pass, or a take for money, but uh, pass the score. And, you know, I think... Uh, for a lot of people, you know, a 15 point match doesn't uh, sound like a lot, but already when the cube is getting to the four level, it's changing the dynamics for money by quite a bit. Um, you know, his recube to eight is like uh, crippled, and the possible gammons, you know, my gammons become considerably more valuable than his. Even though, you know, Gammon isn't super likely for either side, it's still a possibility. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's still there. 4.7 right. or 3.3 could happen for sure. Um, yeah. And, and I think his take point is also higher at the score, although I don't really know the numbers 
So like even just uh, even just a dead cube take one, I think is higher. And I rolled double one, which is like perfect. Yeah, you know, makes us subscribe. Hit yeah. off the front. Yeah. And he's forced to enter six three, five one, four, and then five. Uh, all these are going to be really close. Yeah. 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 Normally I just move the front guy and don't really think about it, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's fine. Four, two, you fan, which is fine by you. Four, three. Yeah, I don't mind. Double five. The five, five play. I'll just plus some of these as we go along. You're four, one. And fine. four comes out and your one comes up. I could have done something different, but like this is okay, I guess. This can't be bad. Yeah. Here, one, two, three, four. 20 to 19 and 9 to 5 makes sense because now I have sixes and threes to, to make the two point. Yeah. 5 2, 3 2 fans. 6 1. Yeah, this is. Or you just give yourself more twos by playing two to one than by playing three to two. Yeah. Just trying to yeah. keep your board as best as you can for a little bit longer. Three Especially one. double twos leaves a shot, but yeah. Five, two, four, one. Um, oh, here's your the five, three. Yeah, I mean, I don't all the plays plus, are, plus these all these are going to be super close. Yeah. So yeah, I can hit loose with double fives if I come to the 17, but uh, I can just make the two point with double fives anyway. And it's not supposed to be like terrible. Oh, by switching or something? No, not switching, no. Uh, one, two, three. Oh no, I would, go, I would go to the five and go 13 to eight, I guess. Okay. That's also supposed to be fine, right? Yeah, yeah. Should be. Yeah. Um, five, two. Six four. Yeah, this this was uh, just kind of. I made a I made a couple careless plays uh, when I was rolling the prime. Yeah, and, so by uh, making it, you don't get the the opportunity to pick up the blot that's in his home board, whereas you'd just prefer to hit loose and then maybe get hit back and then get the second guy. Yeah. I mean, I think I want to make the two points, uh, but I want to make it with a six, not with a four. So, like, I don't want to make a seven prime. Because then it just becomes awkward. I don't mind picking up the blot either. That's true. Um, but, you know, if I rolled double six, I would make the two point. But I guess I wouldn't have any option. I don't know. If I rolled, like, a six and he fanned and then I rolled another six, I would probably make the two point. Because I would be, like, flexible. And then I could, like, slot the ace and hope to get hit on the ace, maybe. But, like, I really don't want to, like, make a seven prime. That just becomes more awkward later. Yeah, the seven primes. I have some positions saved in a folder where, like, the seven prime that you have, you end up playing uh, an ace to break the front of it in some situations, you know? Yeah, I think the next roll, actually, I roll 4 1, and uh, maybe I should just play 2 to 1. Ah, um, interesting. I didn't even see that yet. So, 3 2. Yeah. And, oh, look at that. Speak of the devil. Yeah. Another position to add to my folder. <laughs> <laughs> Right? It's the same yeah. idea. Yeah. It's the same idea. I, you know, it can I work who out. Messaged badly. me this to begin with. I think I posted a position on Facebook and then someone said, Yeah, you got a seven prime. You just play your aces from the front yeah. sometimes, especially here with the blot there. You know, like you get two guys right, close down. Right. The, 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 uh, yeah, it's possible I can pick up the second blot if he comes in and can't move it. Yeah. The G's it can work out. Badly sometimes if he rolls like let's say two one two three, uh, then he just like comes in and picks up the blot and hits the guy in the deuce point, and now I have the blot out of play on my ace point. But you know it's still better overall to try to try to pick it up. Yeah, it could work out. Pick up some of those G's that are almost nothing now, but could be something if you get two guys closed out. It goes from what like four percent to forty. Yeah. Yeah, maybe like good. a bit. Of, depends on where the spares are exactly, but maybe like 40% yeah, on average, course. something like that. At its best. <laughs> At its best, it's a little bit better because he has a broken board. He's got a broken like board almost, so you can bear off more like, aggressively. Yeah. 
it's like maybe like closer to 50 than 40, but it's still, you know. And it's funny because like these little, what might appear to be kind of like ticky tack things eventually, I mean, who knows how double fours would have played otherwise, but it kind of leads to this position where your spares are just not where you want them to be. They're just too right. far forward. Right. There's a lot of numbers that just break and give them a chance where there was no chance, you know? Right. Yeah. I have this like front loaded position with spares on the four and three and eight. And it's like super awkward. And you have this, uh, five one to play coming up next. And yeah. I mean, I'm it looks like from, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm assuming. Wow. Okay. So well, I mean, you, what's the best play here before we click well, on it? <laughs> it? It must be seven to one because there's only two plays. Seven I mean, one, yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of shocked that like, I, I don't know that I could, could find this move because it's just like almost always wrong to break a six prime. <laughs> um, like i don't i don't even know if i've i've seen this one come up like almost ever like i can i can understand you know breaking the two point when you have a six prime to back it up but you know leaving leaving one six one three one two double one just seems very yeah, I, strange i think <laughs> if, he, if he only had a three point board i don't think he would do it but with the yeah, three point board and the blot. Yeah, it's because of his one four and one five where I can pick up the blot. Yeah. But like even so, it seems so strange. <laughs> no, it's it's definitely weird to do. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but it's almost one of these situations where it appears like on your next roll with the majority of your numbers, you're either going to be hitting loose and breaking the seven anyway. Yeah, I also have some scenarios. bad rolls. So and I guess five, five fours. fours. Yeah. Yeah. Five four is like disaster. Uh but I guess that's like my worst roll. But like yeah. also double four, double five are not great. And then even if I hit loose, like, you know, now I'm leaving a bunch of stuff. So I think it's like half the numbers that like aren't really good for me, right? If I play two. So that's yeah. part of the reason why why hitting is uh actually a contender normally breaking as a six prime is just like you don't even like ever consider it so i guess that's why i didn't consider it here <laughs> uh, but yeah the not combination... with one guy back to escape like that like there's scenarios right. where there's a second guy on the roof and you're trying right, to right, close right. out the front guy and then you'll break it to hit loose because you know the consequences that there aren't as many turnarounds you know right right but in a yeah, scenario yeah. like this, it's rare for sure. Yeah, I, I think it's the combination of him having the blot just so he can't pick up with one four and one five, and I get a shot with one six. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that my position is like super front loaded and awkward if I play it to two. Yes. Like if it if I didn't have both of those things, it wouldn't even be close, I, I guess. So two one, he gets to pick up the thing. Right, four uh, three, I have to hit. Four three, you have to hit, and this is one of these scenarios where, like, it's just kind of repeating. You still have the blot on the seven, and you're hitting loose on the ace to begin with, almost like you would have the other way. But this way, it's yeah. forced. Yeah, almost like I would have the other way, but uh, my position's more awkward. The spares, and he doesn't have the blot anymore, <laughs> so like, there's no number that hits and leaves a blot. His one six is like almost gin now instead of you know leaving eleven returns. And he rolls the one three. Yeah, he rolls double ones. You, of course, fan. And then right. he rolls the six. Three. And you and enter with just three. one. And then he gives you this recoup. Now I looked yeah. this up for money, and it's a take by, I don't know, like one and a half percent for money. Like <laughs> I could definitely see myself throwing this away. Yeah. Um, but I think it would eventually pass for money, even though it is is a small take, as it turns out. Yeah, at the score though, it's not even a redouble. So I mean, if you're talking about the big cubes changes from two to four, I could imagine from four to eight in a fifteen point match when you're already up by four points is much harder to find the window there. Right. Um so I guess, you know, one way you can look at this is like if I pass this cube, 
It's going to be zero eight. Uh, so, you know, I don't know exactly what that's worth, but I guess like 15%. So if I just took and like immediately redoubled, no matter what happened, maybe I would have like 15% or something. But like I can even do better by like not redoubling if he rolls, let's say, double four or double three and is just like gin, right? Like I'm not going to redouble that. <laughs> So it should be like less than whatever my equity from zero eight is. You know, I'm not I'm not like super strong with the with the match equity, but uh, you know, I thought maybe would you it's have something considered like, recubing this if you were in his position, or would you have well, just rolled through? I mean, um, maybe consider is the wrong word because of course you're going to consider it, but would you have? Yeah, you know. I mean, I probably would have rolled if it was me, but there's also like practical considerations. Um, you know, if I mean, Gaz is a strong player, but you know, if he thinks I'm like even like slightly better than he is, then like, you know, it starts to become like a thing where like you could just, you know, end the match in one game uh, instead of like dragging it out forever. Well, it'll end in one game, that's for sure, regardless of <laughs> who it goes for. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if you just win eight points, you're up twelve zero, and like you know, it's uh, you know, it starts to it starts to become a big factor. And I'm not exactly sure how to quantify these things. I just know that it starts to have like a really big effect, uh, like more than most people probably think. I mean, um, like numbers like six four, six five, five four, six three, all land just in a spot where you can hit them as well. Yeah, so six four six six four actually leaves thirteen. Uh a nine or eleven leaves eleven. Yeah. And then if he rolls like if he rolls a number like six two, I think he's leaving like ten shots, right? Four, three, five, two, and all the aces. Uh so like normally I'm gonna have like the equivalent of like a direct shot almost. Um you know, he could roll a number like two one and leave a you he could you know, he doesn't have to leave anything if he rolls two one, but you know uh, <laughs> that's that's a very good roll for him. So he's two one double four double three. Now can I ask you a question? If White had two one, would they really play two to one here, or would they just pay off? Oh no, you don't. No, you don't give four six five six right. double six. No, that's way yeah. too much. I yeah, it was you just give... double six for a second, but it's not. <laughs> no, yeah, that's a lot of shots. It's uh, yeah. it's actually six numbers, right? Four yeah. six, four, six, five, six, five, six double six. six. And double four. And double four, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you don't give six shots. And, you know, you probably get home, like, semi-safely, hopefully, next time. Uh, playing 13 to 12, I mean, you know, you, don't, you, you you hardly gain that much if you get missed. Like, you gain you gain something. You're a pip closer, but, you know, you're, you, either way, you, you still have to no, roll. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't see immediately that it was that many numbers. Yeah. I was like, oh, no, actually, that's there's no way I would give that many numbers. I don't like giving any numbers. Right. Sometimes right. you have to, but here you do not have to, and you should not. So double three and double four are gin, and, like, two one is a decent roll, but, like, almost every other number, I'm going to get, like, ten-ish shots on average. And... You know, I just figured that had to be some sort of a take, even though I don't always win when I hit a shot, right? I still the open ace, like, it's got to be pretty reasonable to, you know, think that that's got to be better than passing and going down 0-8. Yeah, I mean, I could see, obviously, some lesser players even passing regardless of what the score is, you know? Not yeah, that that's true. If, uh, you know, I mean... Um, Actually, if uh, if I were playing someone who is like substantially weaker than I am, I mean, not like Gaz, you know, but like, uh, you know, a very not Joe strong Schmo, player. Don't name a person, okay? <laughs> would I would I consider just giving up here? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> not if it was being streamed, though. No. <laughs> yeah, not not if it was like a UBC where I have to win the PR, you know, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> are, are you ever going to go to the UBC? I'm uh, I'm considering it. Uh, you know, I might I might go to Turkey actually. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking, I've uh, yeah. I, I've looked at flights from London and looked at the hotel already. 
And there's also another really big tournament going on out there at the same time that I know like Mochi and Akiko and Michi and a lot of these people are going to be at where, yeah. you know, the entry fee isn't um, particularly high, but there are like a thousand players. And so like the mm-hmm. prize pool ends up being really good. So I'm going to stick around for that as well. Yeah, I've heard it's a really good uh, tournament. It would yeah, be my, my first time actually in the UBC or in Turkey. So Yeah, so um, I'm, I plan on going as well. Um, my equity is lower if you're there, but, you know, I want you to be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's going to be 999 other players, hopefully. No, so. I mean in the UBC too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I obviously know I could, you know, just get beaten by anybody, but like, Yeah. <laughs> But um, okay, so double take, and then here is the last like real double decision. Five. Yeah, um, I think double fives is like a good roll because you know it leaves eleven shots, but they're the it's like really a last roll here. Like the other way, you know, if he just rolled like a four one, you know, he would leave like nine. Yeah, that's worse because he could just like, roll four one again. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Whereas this one, if it, you know, it, it really is over if he, right. if you get by. So I think double know? five is like above average. I mean, it's not as good as like the gin double three, double four, but. Uh, so why pretty, is this? Um, so obviously you're, you're, you're negative equity in this position, but you actually make yeah. yourself less negative equity by turning the cube. Yeah, I, I considered it because, you know, I just, I'm not really great with like Nash equity and numbers like this. I, I'm this isn't really my strong suit, <laughs> um, but you know I'm gonna be down zero twelve, so I'm only risking point match, yeah, 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 or more if I get gammon. <laughs> um, How could, so that, I, could that even happen? Yeah, I mean, you know, so eight percent, so I, I kill gammons against me, which is part of it, and I'm also losing my market on a hit, uh, you know. If he enters with anything other than one six, I lose my market. And if he fans, I lose my market. Uh, you know, I still have to win. Like, it's not like, you know, I have a closed board. So if I had a closed board, I would redouble for sure. Yeah. Because, you know, then it's like basically a, just a pure last roll position. Um, but here it's not exactly a last roll. Um, but I do lose my market on a hit. And. Yeah, I'm just really not risking very much at all, right? My equity from zero twelve is like, I don't know, four or five percent or something. Like, so I'm risking like five percent, and you know, I don't know how much I gain, but it's got to be at least reasonably substantial. And <laughs> it's, then you it's miss. always tough to redouble when you only win less than twenty five percent, but you know. <laughs> Sometimes, you I know, you it. just go, well, there's the equity and me being able to leave the table as well and not have to play, like, you know, That's <laughs> try true. to fight back That's from, <laughs> try to fight back from. Uh, yeah, it depends on, like, if it's the first round of the tournament or the finals, you know, it, like, uh, it really makes a difference, actually. Yeah, are, are there rebuys <laughs> or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there are rebuys, you just redouble, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you just take it. So here's yeah. this here, and that was it, and that was the end of the match. Yeah. All right. That well, was a good match. Yeah, no, it was a short one. The the, the yes, analysis sir. of it was longer than the match itself by about fourfold, which I appreciate. Yeah. He has played well. You know, I think his biggest checker mistake was like the 2 1, which was like, you know, almost impossible to see. Yeah, that was a really <laughs> hard one. And yeah. um, then the recube here. But yeah. Yeah, other than that, really <laughs> this good. This one is even like, you know, even like reasonable anyway. Great. Well, thank you for this. Uh, signing off. Any anything Thanks coming for up with you, me. Matt? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know exactly. Like I said, I might go to the UBC in Turkey. Uh, you know, I'll be I'll be around. Uh, maybe we can make some more videos. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, thank you very much, and I will see you next time.